Hi everyone, glad you could join me whilst we look at a time in Earth's history when it first saw plate tectonics and a weird little thing called life. The Archean is an eon in Earth's history that follows the Hadean, which you can find out more about here. Now it began around 4 billion years ago and at that time things were still calming down from the Hadean but it was still fairly hostile. So the heat was still fairly high from various high energy events that were going on such as the formation of the core. Uh, there was also planetary accretion which is essentially when a planetary body attracts nearby material through gravity and the decay of radioactive elements. However, things were starting to calm down enough for certain things to start taking place and beginning, hence the name Archean, which means the beginning. One thing that we see first here is that the Archean rocks are actually the first rocks that we can see that are still on Earth's surface, even though they're quite rare. Another thing that famously begun during this time is the formation of modern plate tectonics. Now it's likely that chunks of the Earth's surface were still swirling around during the Hadean. However, the Earth's mantle had become a lot more viscous by the time we get to the Archean, so things were starting to slow down a little bit more. So things were starting to take shape. As to what shape, we don't actually know quite that much. Continental crust was only just beginning to form, and at that time, the whole planet was underwater. What also doesn't help is that Archean rocks are actually kind of rare, with most of them having been recycled and subducted back into the Earth. So it's actually because of this subducting and recycling process that our knowledge of the Earth actually gets a lot more hazy the further back we go. What we do know with some confidence is that the plates are moving with more modern characteristics as they are today, with stronger plates being subducted and re-emerging at mid-ocean ridges though the continents were still thin because of the hot mantle. If your brain is hurting a little bit at this point, don't worry, I will be doing a full video on plate tectonics pretty soon. In terms of the atmosphere of Earth at this time, things still weren't ideal for anything too mainstream, like those losers that need oxygen to survive. No, oxygen in the atmosphere was still incredibly low at this point. One major giveaway of this is a particular type of rock seen during the Archean called banded iron formations, or BIFs. Now these are marine sediments with, as the name would suggest, bands of grey and red sediments. The grey sediments are finely grained shirt or shale, whilst the red layers are made up of iron oxides such as magnetite or hematite. These red layers are the giveaway. You see, when oxygen is low and below a certain saturation point, more of it can be absorbed by the rocks, turning all the iron in there a rusty red colour. Now the reason these don't exist during times of higher atmospheric oxygen is because the sediment becomes oversaturated and can't absorb anymore, much like when you put too much sugar into a hot drink. Now this brings us very neatly on to the main event of the Archean, life. The first forms of life are seen in the Archean rocks. These were bacterial organisms, the first of which are prokaryotes. Another common structure seen during the Archean are stromatolites, which are small mounds of sediment created by various photosynthesizing bacteria. In fact, even though these structures are a lot rarer these days, they can still be found in places like Shark Bay, Australia. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. The question is, how the hell did they get here? Well, in 1952, Stanley Miller and Harold Jury decided to pee in the cup of creationists and conducted the primordial soup experiment. In it, they created an apparatus able to recreate the atmospheric conditions of Earth during the Archean before applying electrical currents, which would have been in the form of lightning in nature. The resulting liquid was collected after a few days and voila, amino acids were formed. And eventually these amino acids would lead to the first forms of life. Another fact that's been thrown around quite a bit is that these amino acids have actually been found on meteorites, which obviously would have come from extraterrestrial bodies that would have had similar atmospheric conditions to Earth. All you've got to do from there is replace the lightning with some solar radiation. Suddenly the concept of aliens doesn't seem like such a silly one, does it? Now, these photosynthesizing organisms had it made. 
the atmosphere was full of food, the neighbourhood was quiet, and no other life forms were around to bother them. Glutton is a downfall though, and they soon suffered. Remember, a waste product of photosynthesis is oxygen. After millions and millions of years, the atmosphere was now full of that oxygen. Meaning they were now drowning in their own shit. Now if life wanted to continue, it would definitely have to change things up by the end of the Archean 2.5 billion years ago. But that is for another video.